and Ian Castleberry joining the Wise Guys. Barrett Sports Media playing with us Thursdays for our NFL Gold Nuggets feature. See Ian's appearance presented by David Creaseman and the gang at D.C. Creaseman Jewelers. All right, Ian, a judge has made it clear that Deshaun Watson must discuss his past with the 18 massage therapists that have basically accused him of, of, of assault. Now, Watson in the past has refused to do so, but this order, apparently Ian is going to change that. Apparently he has 30 days to comply. Why this decision now by the judge, Ian? Well, actually, the 18 women that the judge wants Watson to talk about his relationship with them, these 18 <laughs> women are separate from the 22 who are suing him, uh, the, the civil lawsuits uh, alleging sexual misconduct. And the, the purpose of this is that the lawyers are citing a, a Texas law, and I think other states have this sort of law as well, that if Watson is questioned about the, these 18 women, and I believe these 18 women defended and supported Watson uh, in public statements. But the purpose of the request is to demonstrate Watson's motive when arranging these massage appointments. Like if he had any sort of sexual encounter or with these 18 women that the plaintiffs in these civil lawsuits are going to say that this establishes a motive. Like, okay, when Watson scheduled these massages, he had other things besides the massage in mind. So that is why this is taking place. Man, this is just, <laughs> Michael just shaking his head in there. This is, when's this going to end? I'm sure Watson's asking the same question, but um, that just means, crazy, Mike. That means 40, he has worked with 40 different massage therapists. Yeah. I mean, I've had, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just, that's just, that's a Saturday night, that's a Saturday night live skit waiting to happen. I mean, I've had like four, two of them were from Massage Envy I mean, in my life. You know what I mean? It's like, you, the, 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 usually it's like you find a good massage therapist, you stick with that massage therapist because, you know, you want to get a massage, you know, the usual, this is going to be interesting to see what the 18 women say. The massage therapists say, you know, I'm sure Cleveland's going to be, the Browns will be paying close attention to this one for sure. Oy. All right, Ian, this crazy trade between the Eagles and the Saints, and what's interesting and kind of makes it a bit wonky, it involves only draft picks. Uh, I think they're swapping first-round picks. Are the Saints getting an extra one, an extra first-round pick in this deal? And who do you think got the better deal on here, Ian? Yeah, the Saints are getting an extra draft pick. So the Saints originally had number 18, the number 18 pick in the first round. So now they will have Philadelphia's number 16 and number 19 picks. So with those two picks, they could fill two holes on their roster, you know, whether it's offensive tackle, or safety, wide receiver. Some people think even that, that the Saints could use these two picks to move up if they wanted a quarterback like Malik Willis or maybe Kenny Pickett. But most of the NFL reporting says that the Saints are doing this. To get two first-round draft picks is preferable to trying to get two players at certain positions in free agency. It would be less money, just pay out their, their, their four-year contracts, not rookie contracts, rather than having to pay out a, a free agent contract. So, the, the yeah, kind of the... The scuttlebutt is that the Saints might be trying to make a move for a quarterback. I mean, for instance, you know, would they be interested in making a move with the Panthers? You know, would the Panthers trade down from six if they were getting number 16 or 19, if the Panthers weren't interested in any of the top quarterbacks available? That would depend on who's available at number six, of course. And then Philadelphia. At first, I think Eagles fans and people in Philadelphia who, who, who cover the team, or at least uh, in sports radio, were wondering why would Philadelphia give up a number one draft pick? So they, they will still have two picks in the first round, number 15, number 18, but they do get a first round pick next year. And there, there's some thought that with, with two first round picks next year, maybe they can get more of an impact player. Right now, there's kind of a logjam. If you look at the first round of this year's NFL draft, the, the Giants, the Jets, and the Texans, and now the Saints also have multiple top picks. So there, there's not a lot of room to maneuver. Next year, the Eagles would have a, a little more flexibility. And there's also a lot of thought that th this would give the Eagles one more season to evaluate whether they want to stay with Jalen Hurts mm -hmm. as their quarterback. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Mike. I, I don't know the status of the 2023 draft class. My guess is it's maybe a little bit better than what we're seeing now. And and, and you know, speaking of the Panthers, this is interesting, Ian, quickly. 
I really think they need an offensive lineman. You know, Cross, the kid from Mississippi State, if the kid from NC State stops, um, you know, drops down. But it looks like more and more they're focusing on a quarterback and maybe focusing in on Kenny Pickett uh, at number six. Where, 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 are you, where are you gauging this, Ian? I'm with you. I think offensive line is the way to go. I, I think that would be the best value that high in the draft. Evan Neal from Alabama is another name that could interest. The, unless the Panthers think one of these guys is a franchise-type quarterback, Malik Willis, Kenny Pickett, we mentioned Matt Corral from Old Miss. I guess if the Panthers think those guys are franchise quarterbacks, then they have to take them. But building at the offensive line and then you know next year in the draft, of course, we don't know where the Panthers are going to pick yet, but you have two superstars, potentially, uh, Bryce Young from Alabama, C.J. Stroud from Ohio State. Are both of those guys better than anybody that's available in this year's draft? And that's something the Panthers are going to have to consider. Yeah, as Ian Castleberry joins the Wise Guys with Barrett Sports Media. And, of course, it is our NFL Gold Nuggets feature presented by D.C. Creaseman Jewelers. All right, Michael, here we go. The Bills make me want to kick your heels up and shout. Throw your hands up and shout. Throw your head back and shout. Come on now, the Bills. All right, here we go. It's our uh, Buffalo Bills takeover question. Stand Although this was kind of in the news to begin with. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So let's get to it. Ian, it was bound to happen after Devontae Adams, Tyreek Hill both signed mega deals with other teams. Pressure was on Buffalo to re sign Stefan Diggs. Done. Diggs joined or signs a four year extension with the Bills. That deal. Pays one hundred and four million dollars, seventy million guaranteed. That should get him a decent house in Buffalo. He's now signed through twenty twenty seven. Likely retire a bill. All right, Ian Dig signed for far less money than Adams or Hill. Did the Bills receive a hometown discount, or was that just his market? I think that's the way things worked out. Diggs is still under contract with the Bills for two more seasons, so that might be the key difference there. If, if Diggs was a free agent going into this offseason, like Tyreek Hill yeah. was. Uh, is going to be after this season, uh, like Devontae Adams, you know, he had the, the leverage of being franchise tags. I, I think that's the, the big difference. It, it's it's not always, are you the best player? More often than not, it's when you become a free agent, right? Whether you cash in. But in terms of guaranteed money, you mentioned Diggs, uh, $70 million of that contract is guaranteed. If you look at the guaranteed money, Diggs is pretty close. with Because Tyreek Hill, he's getting $72 million guaranteed. Devontae Adams is getting sixty, nearly sixty-six million dollars guaranteed, and all three receivers are about the same age. So there, there wasn't necessarily the urgency in terms of. I mean, the Bills did want to lock up Diggs long term, but there wasn't the urgency in terms of impending free agency for the Bills with Stephon Diggs that Tyree Kill and Devontae Adams face. Yeah, I think it's a good move. So the Bills have made a good move here, and it frees up some money in the salary cap for them. Um, and I know Stefan uh, really seems to enjoy playing in Buffalo, seems to be enjoying playing with Josh Allen and Brendan Bean, I think, is usually one of the top general managers uh, in, in the NFL this year. You know, uh, the Bills did not have a lot of room under the cap space, but somehow they've, you know, they've re-signed Stefan. They've, they've, they've added Von Miller. And they've uh, and they've signed some other key players back, and they had to, you know that they had to let go of Cole Beasley and a couple other people. But they've really, I think they feel like they've strengthened up their defense, and uh, they, they just, you know Diggs just is so important to their offense and to Josh Allen. They, they've they have an incredible rapport the two of them together, and so it's uh, so it's great news for Buffalo. It's yeah, man, great news for the Bills. Got to be stoked on that for sure. I know uh, if I'm a Bills fan. I'm like, right on. Uh, all right, Ian, it looks like T.O., Terrell Owens, is back in pro football? Kind of, sort of? Kind of, sort of. Terrell Owens is signing on or, or joining the Fan-Controlled Football League, which is an arena football league. Huh. And the fan-controlled part of it, I think these games are going to be, you can view them on Twitch, streaming outlet uh, affiliated with YouTube, I, I believe. And fans can actually pick the plays that these teams will execute. I don't know how they determine it if, you know, a bunch of people are throwing in the play uh, at the same time. But what could potentially be interesting about this is that Terrell Owens will play with Johnny Manziel. They will be uh, on the same team. I, I, I'm sorry, I forget the name of the of the team. It's like the Blazers or the Ballers or something <laughs> like that. Just go to Twitch uh, to find out. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Terrell Owens, there, there have been reports, too, that Owens was constantly nagging Andy Reid last year with the Chiefs saying, hey, you know, let, sign me. You know, I can help out. I can do at least as well as Josh Gordon did. And Terrell Owens, you know, he's 48 years old, but you got to think he's still 
in outstanding shape, mm-hmm. even, and he hasn't played in 12 years in the NFL, but maybe he could be contribute to a team as a fourth or, or fifth receiver. So I got to think that's one reason why he's, he's signing on to this fan control football league is to show NFL teams potentially that, that he's still got something left. Wow. Mike, this is, this is the irony of all of this. When the first thing I thought when I heard about this and what this league was all about and T.O. is going to be a part of it is T.O. never took, he, he never liked people telling him what to do. Apparently this league is telling T.O. what to do. Like you guys are going to run this play or that play. If I'm reading this right, I'm with Ian. I think this is just a, another effort for T.O. to try and get back into the NFL, but at 48, good Lord. And you're going to go with Johnny Manziel. Desperate times call for desperate measures. No, so, and, yeah. uh, it uh, maybe Tia wants to uh, uh, bring back his reality TV show, which, if you recall, do you remember he had? A TV I sure do. Yes, it was terrible. Did. Yeah, it was horrible. Oh, I don't know about that. It, it was. Some, it was. I mean, I thought it, it had its moments. Chad Johnson had, I think, uh, a better show than than him. But boy, we're really we're really going low into the barrel with those with those, with those reality TV shows. Ian Castleberry plays with the wise guys. Ian, I'm gonna. If you don't mind, if you did you hear what Ronald Acuna Jr. said about Freddie Freeman? I didn't. Okay, stand by. We're going to get your reaction on this. But first, we want to ask you final uh, NFL question with DC. Anything out there for Baker Mayfield? It's been cricket since Deshaun Watson signing. No, there apparently is no interest in Baker Mayfield. And I think other teams know that the Browns can't keep him. You can't pay Baker Mayfield almost $19 million for 2022. I suppose there's a chance he could be the Browns starting quarterback if uh, Watson ends up getting suspended so maybe it's in the Browns interest to to keep him around but I think mostly what you're seeing are NFL teams saying ah we're not going to make a trade we know you got to get rid of Baker Mayfield you're not going to pay him 19 million dollars so so we'll let you pay that money and we'll take him on uh, as a free agent and pay a lot less money there's a lot of reports or, or maybe it's mostly speculation that the Seattle Seahawks are the best destination for Baker Mayfield, they need a starting quarterback after trading Russell Wilson. Uh, they're in a, what appears to be a full rebuild, but uh, Baker Mayfield certainly can give them an established quarterback, a name that, that fans maybe would show some interest in. But other than the Seahawks, and again, that's speculation, there doesn't appear to be a lot of uh, interest in Baker Mayfield. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, those, prog- those progressive commercials are going to pretty much dry up at this point. I mean, it's going to be to the point where they get a team gets Baker Mayfield for a seventh-round uh, draft pick. I mean, it's I'm, I know it, it's like the Sharks are just waiting in the water because they know that, right, Ian? Like you just said, they, they know the situation Cleveland is in, and it, they've kind of boxed themselves in now. Um, so that's on the Browns. Gee, imagine that. We'll see. Uh, we'll, of course, be uh, following Baker Mayfield's next journey if there is one. All right, Ian Castleberry with the Wise Guys, presented by D.C. Creaseman Jewelers, our NFL Gold Nuggets feature. But, Ian, a quick baseball uh, hit. Uh, so Ronald Acuna Jr., uh, speaking to a newspaper in his home country, basically said that he and Freddie Freeman clashed. And when he asked if he would miss Freddie Freeman, he said no. And, and, and he kind of goes back to when he was a rookie in 2018 and Freeman apparently was like a, a veterans, a couple of veterans that were really telling him like, dude, you got to get rid of the, uh, you know, the cabana hat. You got to get rid of the, you know, the black eye, the, the glasses, all of that. And apparently he didn't take kindly to that. So he said they clashed. But I just thought what was more interesting is he just said, I won't miss Freddie Freeman. That's not going to stand well with Braves fans. And he's supposed to speak to these comments, I think, before their game, their opening game. But, yeah, what do you think he's, he's, he, he can expect from Braves fans with this comment? Yeah, you got to think that that, w- that would not go well uh, with Braves fans. But maybe it explains some of why the Braves were only willing to go so far with Freddie Freeman as far as a contract offer. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, the Braves obviously would have brought Freeman back if Freeman had I- accepted their terms. Did they know a- about this sort of tension with the team or within the team between Acuna and Freeman, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, Freddie Freeman, just a phenomenally popular player with Braves fans. You, you got to think that would bug them a little bit. But if Acuna comes back and, and plays MVP caliber baseball, I think they'll get over it pretty quickly. Wow. Yeah. So what's say and, and Ian, you know, Mike was and Mike, you were you know weighing in on this at the top of the show. This is you know this is this is Ronald Acuna. Yeah, he's kind of a 
has been unbrave-like at times, as I talked about earlier, when Brian Snicker had to pull him out of the game for not hustling, and he's a bit of a showboat at times. I, I, I talked about you know the Cardinals series in 2019. I think he, with some of the stuff he did, he agitated the Cardinals a little bit too, and uh, that didn't work out for the Braves too well. I think the Braves are an organization that wants to play the, play the game, play it the right way, not be real flamboyant. And Acuna, of course, is so good, and, and um, you know you, you have to give him some allowances. But you think of his, you know, if his battles with, with the Marlins and the way he can sometimes, you know, just just, just stares at a home run and stuff. That's just not what the Braves are about. And I can see where Freddie, you know, that just really annoyed a guy like Freddie. Yeah, who's kind of an old school. Play. He's kind of an old soul when it comes to baseball. He's kind of got that old school mentality at times. And yeah, I can see where that would be a clash. Uh, and by the way, Ian, where do you have the real quick? And I know we're going to get your uh, National League picks next week, but just a little teaser. How do you like the Braves in the East this year? I think the Braves are going to win the NL East. I know, I know Mets fans are, are upset about that, but especially uh, if, with Jacob DeGrom out. For, for the Mets for an undetermined period, I, I think that could be the edge. The, the Braves, they have a young pitching staff that, that has some questions, but I think Matt Olson is going to put up an mm-hmm. MVP caliber season. I, and in fact, I picked him to win National League MVP. Uh, he's going to put up big numbers, I think, hitting at, at the Braves ballpark. You know, maybe there will be a little struggle at first facing National League pitching for the first time, but <clears throat> I, I think also uh, facing National League pitching for the first time, as opposed to those National League pitchers won't have a book uh, on Matt Olson either, and he might be able to take advantage of that. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be another outstanding season for the Braves. All right, here we go, Michael. I, I agree. I think Olson, uh, Braves fans, I know you're upset about Freeman. Give this guy oh, a chance. This guy, he? this guy hit 19 home runs off left-handed pitching last year. That's pretty. That's pretty darn impressive. And and that short porch, and that short porch in Atlanta. I mean, he hit. Uh, I forget how many home runs he hit. Hit for Oakland last year, and that's a ballpark that's not conducive to home run hitters. Yeah, cavernous. You, you put him in that ballpark, uh, but he might hit 50, 60 yeah. home runs. I mean. When I heard this signing, I'm like, this is outstanding for the Braves. This will make them not forget Freddie Freeman, but ease the blow of Freeman not being with the uh, with the organization anymore. And, and and honestly, this is a this is a better move long term yep. uh, for the A's. Olsen is considerably younger than Freddie Freeman, and maybe he'll get along really well with Ronald Acuna Jr. <laughs> we'll wait and see on that. Ian, you're the best, buddy. Always appreciate you. Uh, have a great rest of the week. Okay, looking forward to it. We always are. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, Ian. Ian Castleberry always comes to play uh, with the wise guys. And Ian's appearance, of course, talking NFL gold nuggets, sneaking a little Braves and MLB in there as well. Uh, Presented by David Creaseman in D.C., Creaseman Jewelers.